Ms. Holland? Here. Mr. Olette? Here. And Mr. Templeton? Here. Also present, uh, Mr. Schwaber, Township Administrator, Mr. Fox, your Township Engineer, Mr. Heinholder, Township Solicitor, Mrs. Lohr, Municipal Clerk, uh, Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk, Mr. Fenimore, is he out there? Yep. All right. And uh, Chief uh, Jesse DeSanto, and let's see, we've got Aaron Provenzano as our Zoom te technologist. And did I miss anybody? I think we're all there. Flag salute, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Got a fan in here, so it's actually blowing a little bit. So it's it kind of whatever. Uh, Sunshine statement, please. Mm -hmm. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been balanced for the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. And written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. This meeting is being held via Zoom virtual platform with the meeting ID and passcode and um, telephone information on the township website, as well as posted on the official bulletin board and the front window of the municipal building. And uh, advanced public comments are accepted via written letter or electronic mail. And those received no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the published public meeting start time will be acknowledged during the meeting. And they may be also submitted to the municipal clerk at jlordelancatownship.com or to the attention set at 770 Coopertown Road, Delanca, New Jersey. Uh, and members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting public comment sessions may either make their comments or questions via the audio option or by typing their comment or question via the Zoom platform chat option. And finally, the agenda for this um, Meeting is posted on the Delanco Township website at delancotownship.com. Thank you, Mayor. All right, very good, thank you. Uh, uh, just to uh, elaborate, uh, for uh, newcomers to the meetings, uh, we do have two public comment sessions. Uh, it'll be clearly identified as we get to them in the agenda. So there's one kind of uh, after this first section and then one towards the end after the consent section. So. Uh, first up on the agenda is Ordinance 2021-14. This is authorizing a grant of easement to allow for installation of utility line across Block 500, Lot 1.01, and thereafter transfer Block 500, Lot 1.01, in fee to Rivers Edge Homeowners Association. This is the second reading by title only in a public hearing. The hearing is now open to the public for this ordinance only. Are there any questions, comments from the public on this ordinance, 2021-14? Uh, Anything in the chat or prior Nothing in the chat at this time, Mayor. Okay, at this time, hearing is now closed to the public on Ordinance 2021-14. A motion, please, on the ordinance. So moved. So moved. Okay, that's Patrick, oh, second. Who was that? Second Brown. Second okay, Mr. Thank you. Brown. And a roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Olatz? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes. Thank you. Uh, public comment statement purpose of the public comment sessions is to allow residents to share information and or views with the Lanco Township Committee. Since the committee may be hearing the information for the first time, it's not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. Uh, report of advanced remote meeting comments or questions. This section is to acknowledge and read those comments and questions received by the municipal clerk in advance of the remote meeting, either by electronic email or written letter as required by NJAC 5 colon 39 dash one is uh, Members of the public participating live in this meeting will be given the opportunity for comments and questions during the meeting in one or both of the public comment sessions. Anything in advance, Mrs. Lohr? No, nothing received in advance. All right, thank you. Uh, meetings now open to the public for comments and questions. This is session one. 
if you've got a comment or question, state your name and address. And the floor is yours. Mayor, may I say something at this time? Please. Um, also, too, during this session, um, again, you uh, unmute yourself and identify yourself, name and address, or you may uh, type something into the chat. We will be monitoring the chat. We are getting a lot of comments, not a lot of chatter, a lot of chat after the meeting is closed to the public. People just talking about they will those will not be acknowledged as um, you know uh, comments or questions during the public session. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, still, the uh, the session is open to the public for comments and questions. Is there anything? Hearing nothing in the chat, Mayor. Hearing and seeing none from the public. The session is now closed. Comments and reports, uh, professionals. Let's start off with uh, Mr. Heinhold. Good evening, everyone. Good to see you. Um, the only update I wanted to provide the committee and for the public generally is um, we actually just hit our midpoint update for our affordable housing. Uh, that was simply a report that uh, the planning staff and Janice uh, worked on to put together and required some notice to certain parties within the affordable housing communities as to where we stand. As you know, Delanco um stands in excellent shape relative to its affordable housing not only planned for but provided for units so um we sent those notices out at the beginning of uh at either end of july or beginning of uh no i'm sorry end of june or beginning of july and uh no comments have been received i think they have 30 or 45 days but i don't anticipate we'll receive any comments relative to Lanco. uh if we do we'll inform you but um, we're in very good shape as we have been for years on that issue. And that's all I have for public at this time. And on that, um, we will have, we're also due for a um, trust fund monitoring and uh, affordable housing monitoring report, which is different than the midpoint review. That is also due, uh, that'll be due August, mid August. And I'll be working with um, uh, Clark Caton uh, on that report that's due mid-August for uh, trust fund monitoring and um, affordable housing, the unit monitoring. All right. so I just want to thank you and uh, Mary Beth for putting that together. We've been very fortunate to have Mary Beth on board for our affordable housing. So thank you. And I just want to add for the, for the public, uh, that midpoint review that's uh, prominently posted on our website. And then there's also links or access to our, all previous documents regarding affordable housing. Uh, the affordable housing process is not a one and done. Uh, it's an ongoing continuing uh, process. Uh, every couple of years uh, we go through this and uh, there's always uh, it, it's not something that comes up when we handle it. It's something that we're thinking about all the time. Uh, but the, uh, the reports uh, that are published that are on our website or provide a really good uh, uh, history if you're trying to understand, uh, uh, if anyone's trying to understand how this, how this fits together and the impacts and so forth, uh, that's a real good place to start. And there, uh, while there's a lot of uh, uh, uniquely technical uh, terms that are, are unique to, to that, uh, uh, that subject, um, it's, it's a good source of information to understand that this is an ongoing process and that uh, this, uh, this township and the governing body and the staff work really, really hard to um, make it fit. So thank you. Um, Mr. Fox. Hey, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll bring you up to date on our, our various projects. Um, so everyone knows the uh, Misfits Market, um, the Stanker and Galetto uh, project. Uh, they completed all the work except for the stormwater basin, um, as I've reported before. And I gave them the option of either putting up a bond for the basin or making the repairs to the basin. Uh, they have elected to repair the basin or, or, or get it cleaned up. Um, they did start that today. And hopefully they're hoping by the end of this week, weather permitting, um, they'll have the basin 
uh, repaired properly. And uh, at that point, they complete all the work that we've requested. Um, and then I will confirm with uh, Taylor, um, Michelle Taylor, to make sure the landscape is okay with on her end. The, Harry, um, Harry, does that mean that uh, you'll have a request for release of the bond at the August 16th meeting? Probably. Okay, be prepared. Um, the 2021 uh, road program, I'm still waiting for a, a, a definite schedule from the contractor. Um, is uh, Phil McFadden on, on here? Yeah. Phil, when, on. When, if I could ask Phil, when um, is uh, soccer actually starting? What, what date? All, all, I'm estimating about the second week of August is the only information that I received. Okay. We're, we're, I can find that. Matt's on. Maybe he can tell yeah. you, Harry. Yeah, that's about right, Harry. Second week of August, what Phil said. Okay. Um, we're, we're trying to get the parking lot done, the Phil James parking lot done before that, um, but it won't be striped. It'll be all the repairs will be done and it'll be sealed, but we have to wait for the seal coat to cure before we can stripe it. Um, so it will be usable, but again, it won't be striped. So we'll have to figure out how to handle that uh, if, you, if you want to use it or not. We'll just have practices then, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, we won't be having games with a lot of people coming in. So okay. it should be all right. Okay, great. Um, as soon as I know exact date when they're gonna start out there, I will let everyone know. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, 200 Ash Street is on discussion item, so we can talk about that at that time. Um, the Zubrook Seawall, I don't know if Mike, if you're going to want to talk about that or you want me to fill in everyone what's the latest on that. Um, DEP, we are, we are going to have a good, uh, thanks to Mike, actually, we're having another uh, meeting with DEP and we're going to give another shot. Uh, putting the seawall in the in the original location. Uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but it's another shot, and, and there's a little bit more political pull involved at this time, so we'll see what happens. Um, the Newton's Landing head wall, that is complete. Um, as I, I, know, uh, I noticed, notified you before, the contractor had some issues out there. He, um, when he was working on it, the head wall actually did, well, the flare down section fell in. It, it did what we were expecting it to do sometime in the, in the near future. So it, it did take him quite a bit more work. He's not charging any more money. Um, There's an argument whether it was his fault or not. And so it's it's just, it, he, he removed the uh, flare down section, rebuilt everything, put a new footing in, and it, it came out really nice. So if anybody's in that area and want to take a look at it, 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 it came out nice. I'll be sending out some photographs for you um, this week. Um, the, we have a, a few drainage projects um, that Richard and John and I have been talking about. Um, and that is, the, the first one would be the Robbins Lane ditch um, over on 2nd Street, 2nd and Robbins Lane. And then also on 2nd and River's Edge, uh, the outfall in, in the, river, the, the river part of the outfall. Um, I got that, I attempted to get three quotes. I received two. Um, for that work, and the first one was from Neary Construction, and their quote for that work was fifteen thousand eight thirty-five, and Thor Construction um, was fourteen thousand eight hundred. Uh, I went over with John, and and he's all on, on board with it on you know the, the work that's going to be done, and which can speak as to the funds, and uh, if we want to go ahead with it, we can authorize it tonight and do it by quotes. Yeah, there, there's sufficient funding that's within the budget. So if, and unless anyone's got any questions, we can get this thing moving. If you just uh, by a motion, you know, a most uh, motion and a second and a voice vote, just to authorize that project. Good. Anybody, uh, any of the committee members have any questions for Mr. Fox regarding, uh, that's for two pro the two projects here? That well, it's we're considering one project, but it's two locations, All right? Um, up the street from each other, mm -hmm. All right? Any questions from committee? 
A motion to approve? So, so moved. Second. second. And second by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Thank you. To say all in favor. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you. Uh, okay. The other next one. Yep, the next one would be the Poplar and Manitoba Street outfall. Uh, that's one we've been discussing for, for some time. Uh, we're not sure if we have a, an easement where the pipe goes and where the outfall is. It does not show on the tax map. Um, but if we get to that point, I will certainly discuss it with Doug and, and find out what we need to do um, to get access to, to the property. Um, but it's, an, it's the outfall structure. What we want to do is replace 10, about 10 feet of the end of the pipe. It's all, it's, it's corrugated metal pipe. It's all rusted out. Um, we would put a, a, it's called a duck bill check valve on the end. It's, some of you may have seen some on the river. We install them in certain locations on the river. They're a rubber valve that goes on the end of the pipe and it'll stop the high tide, the stormwater from coming up the pipe, um, but it will allow the stormwater flowing from the inlets out to the, to the creek. Um, so that project would include repairing the pipe, replacing a section, installing a duck bill, and fixing the head walls best we can. It's, it's kind of a makeshift head wall that's there. Um, and we don't really want to do anything extensive because we get into DEP issues. So what we're going to do is, is, is basically repair it and patch it in place. Um, we received two quotes for that as well from Neary Construction um, and Thor. Neary was um, 12,840 and Thor is um, 11,900. And with that, how we typically have done this in the past, the, the cheapest way to do it is the, 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 the township buys the, the, the valve, the duct bill valve, and gives it to the contractor and he installs it. Um, that way there's no extra markup and it, it just comes right to, to the township. Uh, and, and the valve is about $6,000. Mr. Fenimore, are you still on? I guess not. I was going to ask him if, if he's had any difficulties or troubles with the existing duck bills. If, uh... he, is, he is on. Um, hang on just a second. I know I saw him here. He is on. Um, let me uh, reach out to him and have him unmute. Does anyone uh, on the committee have any questions or any objections to... Uh... Uh, this Poplar Street uh, uh, repair. Uh, yeah, it's the, about eleven thousand nine hundred is Thor's low price compared yes. to twelve thousand eight forty for Neary, and then the duck bill I think is sixty six hundred dollars. So it's about eighteen thousand plus, and we do have funds in the drainage uh, capital project. Is this the one that's on McQuaid's property, yeah. private property? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this, okay. the work the work itself is not on his property, but you need to access issues. So John will have to have a discussion to make sure we have access rights. Okay. Yeah, I, I spoke to his son who lives in that house, um, and he has no problem with it. But I'm going to draft the letter, and I can I can review it with Doug, and we can send it to the owner to to have him give us a basically it's a construction easement, is what it would be called. I have a question, Harry. So. This uh, this this uh, duck valve at um, Poplar and Rancocas. This is this is the continuation of the uh, line from Hickory Street that goes down to Poplar and makes a left, goes down into the creek. Correct. Exactly. Yes. So we're we're tackling this. Is this going to help the flooding on Hickory Street? It, it it certainly will help flooding from from tidal flooding. It won't do anything for stormwater flooding, but for tidal flooding, yes, it will. So if it's high tide, it's not going to work. Well, if it's high tide, it, it, it will work. It will work. <laughs> it's blocked the tide. It, it, it only allows water to flow one direction. Only that's water to flow out. So that, that's the purpose of it. And, and if you have a storm, the head pressure from the storm water is more than the pressure from the creek water. So it will actually flow out. But, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we had a you know major rainfall, five inches and uh, you know, Hickory Street flooded like a lake, and uh, Mr. McFadden brought up the fact that, uh, you know, we just had work done over there, and, uh, I, you know, I, as a committee member, thought we were replacing that 
uh, pipe under Hickory Street. And, uh, you know, it turns out it really wasn't to address the problem. I, yeah, that, that what that was, we, we just replaced the pipe because the road was actually caving in. The, the pipe was, that was there had no cover on it and it was cracked in, in several places and, and the road was literally caving in. So it was a repair, replacement of the same size pipe, which is all we could do because of all the, 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 the room we had. Um, so that was only for that reason. It wasn't to improve the drainage. Now to improve the drainage, the next steps are to once we check valve in, we can video the pipe and from all the way from the creek up to, to the ball field and determine where the, there's going to be blockages in there. There's, I'm sure there's tree roots. And we found skateboards and God knows what's in that pipe. Um, once you locate those from the video, then we can do a contract to, to clean it out. And, and that will certainly help tremendously. On that storm, you wouldn't have a pipe big enough to handle that storm during the storm. But yeah. it would have it would have dried out much, much quicker. Okay. When when are the pipes gonna be videoed or TV'd or whatever you want to call it? I thought that was in the works. It 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 is the, the problem we're having is the, the pipes are filled with water in certain areas. So the camera doesn't get any pictures, it's just showing that you're underwater. Um, so once we get this check valve on, we can stop the incoming water and the, the stormwater will, will, will flow out and then drain will be able to video it properly. We can, and what I'm, what I'm looking at is, is if we can kind of figure out areas that are very suspicious, a, a tree next to the line, things like that, we can do spot videos at this time. Um, and then we're going to take a look at that and see if maybe we can, we can do that and then get, get rid of some spot problems that we can guess where they're at. Okay. I think Mr. Fenimore is online. Um, John, yes. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you. Thanks for coming back. Um, yep. Mr. Fox just briefed. Uh, he's got uh, two uh, um, uh, proposals, bids for um, uh, a repair on the end of what the Poplar and Rancocas line to put a duck bill on the end of that. And I just had to, we've got, there's, he's, We've had duck bills installed on a couple of the stormwater out, outfalls, and I was wondering if uh, uh, you've had any questions or- We haven't had any problems yet. Good. Nope. So that did, they're working fine. Um, I, I know there was a, quite a bit of water at Hickory Street, and um, it, 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 it luckily the, the tide worked with us on that. Uh, that helped, but uh, in my past experience, uh, Poplar Street was our really uh, bad pipeline that had all these tree roots that grew in there. And, and, and I think that's the first uh, line that we have to get TV so we know what the problems are. And once this line gets cleaned out, it, it should help it immensely. But with all the twisting and turning at Hickory Street going under the county road, which the county said they don't want any part of fixing that. Um, it's always going to be the same there because that point there, Hickory Street, is the lowest point in the whole town. So the water's going to go, and with that much open area like that, I, I, of all the years that I've been here, I've never seen that field from fence to fence and all the way to Biotis pool, it was probably about five or six feet away from his pool. That's a lot of water. Uh, yeah. I don't think any storm drain could handle that. So, um, but it, you know, getting these lines cleaned out is the number one thing it has got to get done. And it's going to be a big job because when we did this years ago, um, it, it was unbelievable the tree roots that they got out. So just remember that. Thank you for coming back in. Uh, all right. Everyone's comfortable. You can do the same thing. Make a motion to authorize this project. Thor for 11.9 plus purchase of the duck bill directly. All right. For 6,600. And a motion please as described. So moved. A second. Second. All in favor. 
Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have to say, Mr. Mayor. All right, uh, just, just to fill in with what Mr. Fox talked about at the beginning uh, regarding the Zerberg seawall, uh, uh, Harry had met with uh, Vince Mazai as the assistant uh, commissioner of the DEP uh, on site uh, last October. And uh, uh, I don't know what, 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 what magic Harry uh, uh, brought to the meeting, but uh, uh, Mr. Mazai agreed uh, completely, uh, pretty much without reservation that uh, Thought uh, doing a sea, rebuilding the seawall at the original location where the old 1900 seawall was uh, was the right thing to do there and would be the, the uh, long lasting solution to protect uh, the Green Acres parkland and the trees and and uh, the, the public park. Uh, there was a subsequent meeting scheduled by DEP, I think in March, early March, uh, via Zoom, and uh, Mr. Fox attended that and the DEP staff at land use regulation who have never seen the site uh, overruled uh, and disagreed with that uh, decision and um, brought in some other additional complications to the, to the question. So um, I sent off a, uh, a succinct email last week to uh, the assistant commissioner and uh, attached uh, Senator Singleton's name and uh, Assemblywoman uh, Murphy's name to it and uh, um, got a response back in about five minutes from Mr. Mazai. Um, when do you want to meet? So apparently we're still waiting for some dates. We gave them some tentative dates that uh, Mr. Fox uh, and some of us will be available and uh, we're waiting to hear from DEP uh, when uh, they'll come back and hopefully bring some more people that uh, will not uh, um, monkey wrench this thing again. So we're hopeful as always. Any questions on that? All right. I, just, right, I have on. a question for uh, Harry regarding the parking lot at the Field of Dreams. Mm -hmm. When will they be able to paint them, Harry? Did I miss that? Yeah, they, they like to, let, to wait 30 days. Oh, okay. Uh, Okay. I'm getting that confirmed by the by the manufacturer of the ceiling, but that typically they want to wait 30 days. Okay. Anything else, Harry? That's all. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, Attention Administrator, Mr. Mr. Schwab. Thank Welcome you. Back. I have nothing directly. Harry took a good part of it, and uh, uh, Jesse will talk, take the next part that I have something to do with. So move on to the next. All right. Department heads, uh, Chief DeSanto. Thank you, Mayor. I'll start off with uh, what Mr. Schwab had referenced. Uh, we had the um, project for the uh, the um, restoration or I guess the improvement area of the uh, detention and processing area for the police department go out the bids. Uh, the bids came back much higher than anticipated and um, after doing some investigating, it, it looks like the materials uh, like everything else in this world being blamed on COVID. So some of the materials that uh, are going to be used for the project had doubled in cost. So we're going to be anticipating uh, rejecting these bids and then looking at a, a, I guess, a plan B, which satisfies the security and safety of officers and also um, stays within budget of what this project was budgeted for. Um, if there's a way to satisfy both, there is no need to come to you and ask for more money because I know that uh, you know you're being stretched every which way, and there's infrastructure projects that need to be addressed. So we're going to um, look at a plan B and still be within the budget and still provide some safety and security. So we're going to be working on that in the meantime. But uh, the bid that went out, uh, I can tell you, we anticipate of giving you the um, recommendation to reject all the bids. There are 80 to $100,000 over what we uh, projected it would be. So that resolution will be on the August 16th agenda unless something changes. That's what the plan is. If anyone's got any more questions on it in detail now or we'll, we can talk about it in the 16th or in between. Yeah, any other items I have um, all reference to the consent agenda 
you'll see there's numerous ordinances. All of them we've uh, talked about either road since we had this discussion so it's timely i advised the you know what our uh, plan of action was and we're taking we're taking action and the county is going to be following suit and then um, there will be signs posted in the area that she was complaining about um, also we are addressing the parking lot of the field of dreams by trying to establish a weight restriction on the access road so we can post legally uh, that no vehicles over a certain weight will be permitted. I know there's some concern about uh, allowing emergency vehicles, deliveries, and possibly transportation for team um, team vehicles. And uh, I'll let Mr. Einhold address if there's any questions about that that's built into the ordinance of a, an exemption. But uh, we're the ones who are going to be enforcing it. So um, we obviously wouldn't be citing a, uh, an ambulance responding or a fire truck or a um, public service truck responding to do some type of emergency service work. Um, also, uh, there's the resolution for the acceptance of the award of the body camera uh, grant. Uh, like I advised before, we're going to be taking that award in 2022 in combination with funds that we annually uh, appropriate in our operations and equipment budget to pay for a whole new body camera system and still been within the normal annual operation budget for our body cameras. Um, I think that uh, pretty much covers it. Uh, you'll notice that the Parking ordinance for Creek Road, there's two parts. There's one that addresses no parking and then it also establishes no stopping or standing, which was a uh, qualifier by the county in reference to getting on board and, and them putting out the money for the installation and the purchasing of the signs. So that's all I have right now. Um, the extra equipment or surplus equipment we're getting rid of is, um, some uh, out-of-date office equipment, and mainly there is a vehicle which is not uh, operable uh, where we like to auction off to get off our lot. And uh, it's an old patrol vehicle with over 100,000 miles, and um, and it, it doesn't run, and and it's on its uh, last leg. So we're going to, that's one of the items that we're going to be getting rid of to, to auction off. Maybe... Uh yeah, Jesse and Doug can explain why we would have both a no parking and a no stopping and standing. Doesn't the no stopping standing cover the no parking or could it be no stopping standing or parking in one ordinance? Well, I believe what I understand and Doug can correct me if I'm wrong is because we already have a, a scheduled for no parking, um, we wanna make that no parking consistent. And since we're establishing no stopping and standing, we want to make sure that there is actual writing because as the county indicated, they don't believe or they don't feel that uh, one equates to the other. But this yeah. way, there's there's no doubt. Um, they, they believe uh, no parking is open to people who just need to pull over and uh, leave their truck running, idling, because they're waiting for something and they're not actually parking. Um, my opinion about that is a little different, but I'm not going to argue with them. Uh, if it's a matter of just passing an additional ordinance to get them to foot the bill to put up the signs and okay. pay for the signs, I I say you know, no problem. We we can we can pay for the ink. Yeah. Can the will the sign say no standing, stopping, or parking? Have I think the signs are that? going to say no stopping or standing. They're which, not going to say no parking. I'll, I'll check with Joe Brickley, but okay. he made it sound like it was going to be no stopping or standing. Right. Yeah. But I'll ask him if he wants to include no parking. They're going to get a copy of the both ordinances. We'll send both of them up, and they'll see that we cover it all potential basis. And I'll see if he wants to, if he plans on getting the sign to reflect both statements. 
or I guess three, all three statements, no stopping, no standing, no parking. Yeah, we'll see how that works. Maybe we need no stopping, standing also for uh, Coopertown. Uh, we'll my opinion, that. no, but once you, once you, uh, the vehicle is no longer in drive, to me, you're parked. But okay. that's, that's my interpretation. Okay, interesting. All right. Chief? Yes. Uh, equipment that we're getting rid of, uh, I believe in the ordinance or in the, uh, the ordinance that we're going to, uh, any bicycles or that were picked up or you have in storage? We, no, that not included in this round. We do do that like every six months. Any bicycles um, that we recover um, and are not reported stolen and we can't track down the owner, what happens after six months? Um, if it was a re resident or citizen who found the item, they're given the opportunity to get the item back because they're the ones that located it. If it's found by a police officer, then what happens is we're required to uh, auction it off after six months. The township can't take uh, ownership of it. Um, and we don't want ownership of it because uh, most of these bikes are rusted and everything else. So we, we do that every six months. And uh, next time we do a round, I'll make sure I point out to you it, it's bicycles. Last time we did uh, pretty good. I think we had like $400 on the bicycles that uh, we recovered over the last year. So, so, so there that's something that's put out to the public through our website? It's, yeah. There's a website, uh, govdeals.com. Um, it's open to the public. Anybody can can put in a, a bid for the bicycles. We usually tend to do the junkie bikes in lots of five, 10. And then if we see bicycles, which we know are, we go for a premium price, we'll pull them out and auction them actually individually. I think we had a, um, a, um, a bicycle, I think one for close to a hundred dollars um, last time. This this resolution calls for 13 bicycles. Um, it does? It does. It's oh, resolution. I'm sorry. I apologize. These are bikes that we auctioned off already. Um, oh, okay. We, okay, I apologize. Um, the, um, yes, we auctioned them off in the spring. We okay. do spring cleaning. And then we'll do fall cleaning. So okay. yes, these bicycles, that was the error on our part that uh, we didn't submit the resolution. Um, but um, when we we're doing the vehicle resolution, we knew that we needed to include the bicycles. But uh, okay, next, when we do our clean out in the fall, I'll make sure I'll let you know. It's kind of okay. like Just trying to follow the, uh, the, um, yard the Excuse me? This way we can let the local residents know that you know the auction's coming up and okay well yeah we'll post it on our facebook page wonderful thank right. you no problem anything else chief no that's it all right thank you so much and i'm going to jump in here between uh, chief DeSanto and mr fenimore uh, as we've experienced uh we had some significant weather in the last couple of weeks uh, we had the the heavy rains on July 12th, the uh, strong thunderstorm on the 21st, and the uh, tornadoes, uh, high winds on the 29th. And I just wanted to, uh, as, uh, along with the committee, to, to commend and thank uh, uh, police, uh, public works, EMS, uh, Washington Fire Company, OEM, and uh, friends and neighbors, residents all throughout town that uh, helped out with uh, helping residents and uh, pumping out and clearing trees and chainsaws and everything else and uh, as far as I'm aware uh, through all that uh, there were no injuries or, or uh, significant damage so uh, I just uh, wanted to, to highlight that and uh, the great job there and uh, especially with the rash of the the breakout of nine tornadoes uh, that are now re have been reported uh, last week um, uh, encourage people to sign up for the uh, the township notifications, the email blast, uh, Nixle, Swift 911, and so forth, all sources of uh, immediate uh, and timely information. Uh, so uh, if you're not on it, please get on it and talk uh, talk to your friends and neighbors and family in town uh, to get on those notifications. So uh, very important. Uh, Mr. Fenimore, you're next. Yes. 
We've been extremely busy this last month. Um, we cut all the township properties four times, and just keeping up cutting them has been a problem. Um, what I did at the beginning of the year, um, I had um, green, true, true Green come in and um, along all our fence lines, we kill her down. Well, we've had so much rain that just washed it away and I had to do another round with it just to help keep up with, uh, you know, all the weeds and stuff growing all around. Uh, we put out a half, about a half a ton of asphalt. I had to purchase some stone um, during one of the rainstorms, the real heavy one. It, uh, it washed the right side of my road going up to the compost site. Uh, the boat ramp, I still have to get to the fix. I'm going to have to bring some uh, big rock in there to help fill in that washout and get that back to where we can use it. So I haven't had a chance to get back to there. We've been going around this town cleaning storm drains like that's been unbelievable with all the debris and stuff. Uh, we had five trees go down. We cleaned them all up. We had actually one big tree go down up at the compost site right inside the gate. And then the, the other one was up the other end of the compost. And then the other three were out in the street. Um, I started piling all the leaves up. Um, our leaves with all the rain that we've had this year have really broken down good. And what I'm hoping to try to get them out earlier this year uh, and I'm possibly looking into renting a screening machine uh, because it's going to start getting harder to get rid of our leaves with a lot of debris in it. And um, it, it's the right way to do it, but we'll see how it, it you know makes out. The county finally put up all the signs, which everybody knows, out there, the Cooperstown and uh, Enterprise. And... Uh, they did a good job and they went in and they, you know, they got the machine to do it and they, they, they put them right up. So that was great. Saved us from a lot. Um, I'm also working on the hedges. I'm going to drop the hedges out front about a foot. Um, I'm going to make a report up some of the things for next year's budget. Um, I don't know if anybody's been noticing that the sycamore trees in the township parking lot there are really getting out of hand between all the sticks, the bark, and the leaves. It's just been unbelievable. Uh, the, it just looks unsightly. And mm. um, I got a few ideas that I think we should look into to uh, make our uh, town hall look a lot better. And that's about it. There's a, John, I don't know if this should be for our contractor who cuts the grass there, but there's an awful lot of grass growing between the curb and the parking lot in some I've areas. I've been addressing that. I've been addressing that. Um, it's, it's just it so much. Terrible. Yeah, it I does. It, it, re it just really does. And um, we, we got to really do some serious thought into this and try to do some things that, uh, um, in the future, um, that you know, for maintenance wise, and, and, and it just makes sense when, when they planted the sycamore trees out there, I fought with them and now, and, and the gentleman that told me, well, the time that they get mature, John, me, we, me and you will be out of here. Well, unfortunately right. I'm still here. I'm still okay. here too. <laughs> yeah. And, and I see. So much mess, the sticks and the debris, the bark, it just it never stops, it just never stops. And that's throughout the whole town now. So, I mean, you know, uh, it, it's just, you know, a, a thing that you got to continue to work on. And also, um, the young kid that we have that's been help, that's been working for us, he's doing okay. Um it's a, it's another hand and it's a young hand and, and that helps. So that's all I have. Thank you, John. Uh, Mrs. Lord, administration. 
For this section, I um, just wanted to mention uh, that the all townwide yard sale is Saturday, September 25th. And EMS has confirmed that they will be doing their hoagie sale. Um, and the other groups, uh, you know, we have them participating unless they tell us otherwise. So right now, the town, uh, the fall townwide yard sale is on schedule for Saturday, September 25th. And I'll have other, um, other things later on the discussion section. All right, that, that's it for now. Thank you. Very good. And uh, stop in with Mrs. Martin. Uh, anything from Planning Board? Uh, the joint land use board meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow night has been canceled due to a lack of applications. We do have an application that, and the applicant wishes to be heard in September. So we'll have a meeting the, the Tuesday after Labor Day. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Mayor. It's me, Chief. I just have one question for Mr. Mr. Fox. Uh, <clears throat> a, um, it was mentioned to me about Enterprise Drive and the volume of traffic on Enterprise in Cooperstown, and uh, it was suggested. And I don't know if there's around the county that it's, this occurs. Uh, it is a county road, so that's why I'm running by him. Maybe has some experience or knowledge. But the uh, amount of traffic that occurs at the intersection. Uh, due to Soho getting out at the same time and NVR. Um, I didn't know if there's anywhere around the county where it's much like the shore, where you have a traffic light that's on flash and then only becomes, um, I guess, active during certain times or, you know, they do it seasonal, but I was just wondering if that, if you're aware of anything that occurs like that um, and if that was something that the county wouldn't even consider, because um, I know it being a county road, they would have to have input and insight on it. But it seems like for that, even though it's just for, you know, I guess anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, what happens is people become antsy and they don't want to wait until traffic clears and and there's some clear calls. You know, we can do our best to enforce it, but we can't always be there. So I just said, you know, trying to think outside the box, if um, Mr. Fox has ever seen or come across why he's doing engineering or anything like that in this area yeah it's actually actually cheap it's 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 discouraged to to do that okay. um, because people get used to it never turning red um it's not consistent the unique consistency with with traffic signals um so they they run into problems with that and i don't know of any other place in the county that it has it like that okay i don't believe the intersection would I mean, you know better than I, the intersection with the amount of traffic, if they did a traffic study, would call for a traffic light because I'm sure they don't look at one isolated time or time period. They look the amount of traffic over like a 24 hour period, I'm assuming. They would. If it was a developer, you would look at peak traffic. Um, okay. But the county is not going to, to get the county for traffic light up, light up there would be slim to none. All right. I'd like I said, I just want to think outside the box and yeah. come up with a solution. Uh, so we'll keep plugging away. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, consent agenda items. Uh, consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent items will be Agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Is there anything on the consent that uh, anyone wishes to have considered separately or any questions on what uh, is on the list? Hearing no questions or comments, we'll start off. Ordinance 2021-15, amending chapter 295, governing vehicles and parking, schedule one, no parking. This is first reading by title only and set public hearing date for August 16, 2021 at 7 p.m. Ordinance 16, amending chapter 295, governing vehicles and parking. This is schedule three, no stopping or standing. First reading by title only and set public hearing date for August 16, 2021 at 7 p.m. 
ordinance 17 amending chapter 295 governing trucks over four tons excluded this is first reading by title only and set public hearing date for august 16 2021 at 7 p.m resolution uh did i say resolution or ordinance or 17. you said resolution yeah thank you it's ordinance uh 2021-15 ordinance 21-16 ordinance 2021-17 Apologize for that error. Resolution 2021-98, a resolution certifying liens against certain properties for costs incurred by the township in accordance with chapter 135 of the township code. Resolution 99, resolution to cancel property taxes, refund tax overpayment due to total veteran exemption pursuant to NJSA 54-4-3.30A. Resolution-100, providing for the insertion of any special item of revenue in the budget of any county or municipality pursuant to NJS 40A, colon 4-87, Chapter 159, Public Law 1985. <clears throat> Excuse me. Resolution-101, uh, resolution authorizing disposal slash sale of out-of-service police equipment, vehicle, and other items. Resolution-102, approving the Township of Delanco's application, accepting, accepting the award for the... Uh, that's fiscal year 21 body ward camera uh, grant program from the state of New Jersey Office of the Attorney General OAG. Payment of bills, the account uh, current fund $881,590.76. Payroll $152,561.90. Capital fund $101,991.37. Escrow trust $780 even. Housing trust $762.75. Municipal open space, uh, $1,247.50. Approval of minutes, uh, July 12th, 2021. Approval of facility use request, Delaware Avenue Street End at Walnut Street uh, at the Riverbank for October 23rd, 2021. Uh, the approval of business licenses, 2021-36-47 through-51. Approval of the consent agenda, a motion please. Okay. Second. That was a motion by Ms. Holland, second by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Roll call, please. Oh. Can you hear me? Was it? Yes. Okay, thank That's you. Down. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. And Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, meeting open to the public for comments and questions. This is session two. Uh, and yes, any any questions or comments in the chat function? Mrs. Lord. At this time, there is nothing typed into the chat. So anyone that is in attendance that would like to ask a question or has any comments, please unmute and say your name and address for the record. And again, at this time, nothing in the chat. Hearing and seeing no questions or comments from the public, uh, question and comment section, uh, session two is now closed to the public. Uh, status of coronavirus disease, COVID-19 and executive orders. Um, been a little bit of news in the last couple of days on uh, revised CDC guidance. Uh, I have not seen any executive orders come through and uh, a review of current COVID response policies for municipal facilities. Uh, Mr. Arlette and Mrs. Lohr, are there any changes that you would like to discuss or going forward? Currently with our uh, not having to wear a mask uh, unless uh, someone's not vaccinated, and with the changes in the uh, environment with COVID, uh, it seems that in order to protect everyone inside the building, uh, that I th think we need to consider having folks wear a mask if they're coming into the public area and have our employees uh, at their workstations not be masked, but if they go out into the uh, public area, than to wear a mask. I know it's taking a step backwards, but uh, I think this COVID thing's 
also taking a step backwards and uh, instead of moving forward. I um, also uh, went onto the CDC website and it was also um, in one of the um, emails forwarded. You can click on the COVID integrated uh, county view. It's a COVID data tracker provided by the CDC and uh, New Jersey, most of the um, counties, including Burlington County, are um, in the substantial risk for transmission. Uh, two counties are high risk. That would be Monmouth and Cape May. One is moderate. We have no low risk. And so the most of the uh, state, including Burlington County, is in considered um, in the substantial risk for transmission. We just heard today that um, Cinnaminson Township um, put back its policy where if you're coming into the municipal building, you have to have a mask on. And somebody saw that also one of the um, large box retailers, bulk retailers has now gone back to, you must have a mask on when you go into the store. So um, just something to consider. Also the, the uh, tracker, the CDC COVID data tracker also provided um, data charts showing uh, in categories such as transmission, hospitalizations, um, percentage of COVID beds, percentage of ICU COVID beds is on the uptick in the county. Um, so, uh, and the, uh, the rate of transmission is also on an uptick uh, from uh, late July till now. So it's something to cons consider right now. It's uh, no mask. Um, if you have a vaccination, if you are not vaccinated, it's recommended that you wear a mask. So it's um, given this data, it's uh, something for the township committee to consider if you wanted to go back to requiring masks when you enter the building. And then for employees that um, if, when you're in a common area, whether you're vaccinated or not, you must put a mask on. That would seem to be the, a, a prudent thing to consider. Uh, just. Uh, 100% mask for any public uh, that's entering the building. And uh, as, as Mr. Alette described, uh, the employees, staff at their workplace, uh, in their office at workstation, uh, given what we know now, wouldn't be required to wear a mask, but anytime in transit, uh, or if they're meeting someone out in the lobby to, you know, uh, for business, uh, bid opening, things like that, to wear a mask. Uh, is there any any differing views on that, or do you want to uh, adopt that as is right now uh, and change uh, policy going forward? Yeah, I just have two questions. Um, how has um, activity from the public been so far? I mean, it, are there a lot coming into the into the building? Uh, yeah, it, it's been. Um, Yes. I, I'm not around during the day, so. Um, yeah, it, it, and then that it, room that was installed with the glass, is that being utilized? Yes, it is. Yes, that is being utilized. The uh, service windows are being utilized. Um, so, but we do have a lot of volume of people coming to the municipal building. And I'm sure when, when the tax quarter, which is delayed, by the way, the tax bills are not mailed out yet, maybe Eric and Aaron Provenzano can talk to that a little bit more uh, about the delayed third quarter taxes and when those bills will go out. But I'm sure we'll see an uptick of more people coming into the building um, when those uh, bills are due. Aaron, when are, they, when are they going to be due? 25th. I, I thought it was August 25th. I thought we did a resolution extending it to August 25th. No, it's not August 20. It's 25 days after mailing. So the oh, okay. extended grace period is until August 31st. Okay. So at that point, we'll probably see once and once the bills go out, uh, Aaron, is that August 6th? They'll be mailed out by the 6th. Yeah. By the 6th. We'll see an uptick of people coming into the building for that. Um, so it, it it's busy. It's going to get busier. Um, I, you know, all right. Um, I don't think we need to, at this point, go back to staggered sessions and locking the doors and not being open. 
Um, but I think uh, it may be prudent for the committee to consider uh, a little bit um, stricter on the on the masking. Uh, the other the other question I want to ask is is some some uh, groups of uh, uh, boards and so forth uh, meeting there uh, should that extend to to those meetings uh, people coming in you know uh, recreation or environmental or whatever meeting in the municipal building. Uh, uh, well, if you do a habit, we've been you know been dispersing and going to the four corners of the room and so forth. But uh, do we want to? Uh, extend that 100% to them. I think that that would be the logical thing to do. Yeah, I, I that's the other thing too. I'm glad you brought that up is that we have um, the courtroom is set back to the way it was pre COVID. So there's uh, no spacing of the chairs. They're all ganged right next to each other. Um, the shields are down. Um, and if you were to uh, have a policy where if you're in a public common area, which the courtroom would be, you must be masked. So we're not saying, you know, the other aspect of that is social distancing and then uh, for meetings, maybe removing some of the chairs again to create that social distancing. Because right now they're, they're, they're all right next yeah. to one another. I, I, I wouldn't rearrange, rearrange the furniture. I mean, people, you know, can, can find their own space on the aisles and so forth in the rows. So, uh, but uh, is the committee in agreement to move in that direction or do you want to, defer this another two weeks and see what happens. But I think I think it's the smart thing to do given, uh, and I've run into some businesses where there, the signs have changed and up on the up on the window on the doorway, it's a, uh, you know, 100% uh, masking. I think that uh, it's better to be safe than sorry and that we should require anyone coming into the municipal building to wear a mask. In the, in the common area, right, Kate? Or, or yes. any, in the common areas, yes. I don't have an objection, being that I'm not in that work environment. If it makes our employees feel safer, then absolutely. Let's go. All right, well, let's do that. Do we uh, um, motion or all in favor or how do you want? Right. John's trying to, John Brown's trying to say something. And are you muted, John? No, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Go ahead, John. Right now. I'm, not, I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not. I'm going to come in that building and I'm not going to wear a mask. Everywhere I go, we're not wearing, I was just in a bunch of hospitals. Yes, you wear a mask inside a hospital. But that's a little different scenario. People are sick. But uh, we've been beating this up for a year and a half now. And uh, I have moved forward. And for the folks who are not vaccinated, that's their personal decision. And they run the risk of uh, contacting COVID. Not me. I've been vaccinated. My family's been vaccinated and uh, we feel we are safe and uh, I don't, I don't want to go into regression and have to mask up, but it looks like I'm outnumbered here, but I did want to make that point that, um, you know, we, we really need to move forward. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you, John. The sad part about this is with the COVID, folks who have been vaccinated had both shots uh, one of the senators uh, came down with COVID uh, over this past weekend. And uh, so there are, I guess, this new strain uh, is still hitting people. And uh, I personally feel that I have an obligation to, uh, because children are not, uh, able to get vaccinated, the younger children aren't. Uh, and at my uh, grandson's day camp, they had to shut down because someone, one of the children came down with COVID. So in, in the past didn't seem to be uh, as critical that kids were able to bounce back from this or had immune systems to fight this off. It seems to be, uh, there's no respect here from this, uh, I guess new strain that's coming down the pike or is out and about. So uh, that'd be my position on it. Again, uh, wear the mask uh, and let's look out for each other. Uh, All right, uh, what do you need, Mrs. Laura? Um, 
Uh, just an acknowledgement from Township Committee, um, a majority either that we are going to stay with what we have right now, which is the only mask if you haven't been vaccinated, uh, or to go stricter with a common areas, um, you must have a mask on, vaccinated or not. Um, I think where we ended up was all public entering the building is to wear a mask and employees to wear a mask in transit. Uh, through the building, uh -huh. but at their workstation in their office, they're not required to. Uh, and obviously, if anyone's got uh, uh, some other compromising condition, that's their decision to wear it all the time. So, yeah. Anything else? No. So, uh, my understanding before I put a memo out is that the majority of the committee is in favor of um more restrictive mask policy yes 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 thank you thank you um yeah the vaccine stuff uh the county uh, we got late notice of that they sent uh, some canvassers uh, out to people knocking door to door uh giving uh, information uh, uh on the vaccine location is the county seems to kind of put stuff out a day or two late or a week late on some things as far as notification on where different pop-up vaccine sites are. Uh, one just came out today and some of the locations dates were last week. So, uh, but the late, latest data and actually it's about two weeks old. Uh, uh, Delanco is right in the middle as far as the county vaccination rate 70% uh, in Delanco and 70% Burlington County have been vaccinated, completed uh, either one of the J&J &J or two of the, uh, uh, the other types. Uh, the lowest municipality is at 36%, the highest is at 74% in Burlington County. So anyway, um, and the last item, I sent out a survey to all the department heads as far as their uh, personal protective equipment to look in the look in the drawer, look in the closets and see how much they got. If, uh, if this thing starts rolling back that uh, we've got enough for our uh, employees and staff and first responders um, going forward. So since uh, things might have gotten dusty on the shelf. Uh, and that completes that uh, correspondence, Mrs. Laura. I have no written correspondence. We, we did receive a telephone call from a resident con uh, that lives next door to where the Building was just demolished on Burlington Avenue, concerned about that their fencing was taken down. And I believe that um, Mr. McFadden, Phil McFadden, uh, chairman of the REC, has um, you know, assured that the fence will be put back um, along her, that, that line, um, building line, uh, property line for that resident. And, um, and the resident was referred to uh, recreation commission as they oversee the, uh, the park areas. The, 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 the county is aware of that fence and the county is actually replacing that fence. That's the one that r runs along that, that property owner's property line, not, not right. the one along the Arbor Vitae. That's not, not going back, right? Not our fence. Our fence is not being replaced. But the, one, the white one that was along the, um, the building line for yeah. that resident. Um, they said it, it is going to be putting back a white six foot privacy fence, I believe. Yep. Okay. Right. And that's it for correspondence. All right. And that property will hopefully soon be turned over to us, correct? Uh, yes, I forwarded that information, a couple emails to Doug as well, so he can be prepared. Um, They'll be preparing a deed, uh, an easement, and I thought there was one other document, but um, but I did send that to some emails to Doug, so he's had a heads up that it's going to be coming. I believe the county's going to actually prepare the documents and forward them to you, Doug. Okay, that sounds good. Excellent. Uh, discussion items, status of solid waste collection delays. Uh, we, we, we limped through last week, uh, started out good and then uh, kind of ran off the rails again. 
uh, and stretched into Friday and Saturday. Well, um, I, I just think it's time that we send a formal letter, maybe from our attorney, because I don't know what's happening with Beverly and Edgewater Park, but you know, I'm getting a little annoyed seeing our trash cans out for three days and it smells and it's obnoxious and we have a substantial contract and we should have it enforced. Just, uh, <coughs> talked, uh, I talked to uh, Mr. Wolbert up in Beverly and uh, we discussed getting together, uh, Mr. Schwab was out uh, last week uh, uh, and when uh, he returns or is back, uh, schedule some kind of a uh, three-part, uh, four-part meeting with Edgewater, Beverly and us and the uh, South Jersey and uh, decide how to go forward on this and uh, uh, if we're gonna exercise uh, some of the provisions of the contract to uh, uh, get this sorted out. So it, uh, it, it seems that uh, many of the other, uh, uh, some other trash uh, sanitation agencies and, and county recycling has is, is, is managed to uh, get their staffing re, uh, put back together, but uh, South Jersey seems to have a problem here. So uh, we're we're in a bit of a, a uh, things are kind of tight in that business, and uh, many of those contractors are uh, aren't taking on uh, additional customers. But it's something uh, we can ex have to explore uh, to put pressure on uh, on this uh, this contractor. Any comments from uh, Mr. Willetts? I know you've, you've been working this and Mrs. Lohr and Mr. Schwab. So anything you want to add or, uh, and then- Anything that I would contribute at this time would be after or during the uh, meeting with the other two townships. Uh, yeah. It would be an adjustment to, uh, to scheduling, but uh, doesn't hold their feet to the fire right now with the current contract. Yeah, I think Mr. Walbert uh, did calculations that we could all do and notify them of what the penalties are and indicate we have a, a right to uh, withhold that against their next bill, which is what the contract requires and make sure that we have that ability to do that when we're ready to do it, whether it's this month, next month, but by not even notifying them, they have no fear of going forward. But face-to-face -face is absolutely necessary. We had a face-to-face -face at the beginning when this started. We got promises that we're not kept out. We need another face-to-face. -face. Definitely. Do you want to initiate that, uh, uh, Richard or, or Janice? I can, I can get involved tomorrow. Janice and I will get started with that tomorrow. Right. Yep. Good. All right, status of advisory subcommittee formation cannabis zoning and land use study. Uh, I've sent uh, various emails out to uh, the, the groups and uh, I've asked that the, those volunteers or uh, people that are interested uh, forward their names to Mrs. Lohr and collect that. And uh, we'll see how many uh, we get and uh, um, Go forward from that. I um, I would guess uh, as far as the purpose of it, uh, we need to we'll have to uh, craft a resolution that defines the scope of uh, what they're what they're supposed to be doing, and and uh, is that something that uh, would need to we need to put together as far as the scope of what we're asking of them to for research, or is that something that's uh, a facilitator would give them guidance on? Do we need something on paper? I would recommend that we do a resolution if we're gonna create a subcommittee um, that is going to sort of have a non-permanent nature to it, uh, mm -hmm. to advise through this process to determine what, whether we should zone for anything and if so, where and what. Um, and the only, um, you know, I think important thing to that is I think it's important that um, the governing body have some sense of what they think and planning have some sense of what they think and that there be members of those boards that are included in the process so that the policy uh, that comes out of that is reflective of the people who are elected and, and serving on our board. 
Um, and lastly, at some point in that process, although she wouldn't be a formal member of the subcommittee, I think it would be very important to include Michelle Taylor um, in those discussions early and often just from a professional planning discussion to make sure that uh, planning, you know, professional planning considerations are occurring on potential uses in certain areas and what land may actually be available and uh, all those sort of more technical considerations that go into uh, where this may or may not make sense. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, you know, ensure that there, there's a specific tasking, uh, uh, you know, the, the research, you know, what the experience has been in other places, um, what the um, research on, it, on, you know, impacts, uh, positive and negative, um, the suitability uh, of applying what we see in other places, other states uh, that have had a, a couple years experience with this and what that might look like here. Uh, if there's compatibility or incompatibilities, if you've got you know, one type of uh, one category of business, does that discourage other businesses uh, that may be nearby or, or uh, compete for resources? So things like that, that, that I think are important to, that this advisory group um, um, have, have a framework that they're working within uh, and so forth. And uh, hope maybe we can put something together by the next meeting and hopefully we'll have a, enough names to come back to, to uh, make the appointments by name uh, at that time. So is that? Uh, Janice, have you received any yet? No, I have not. I have not. When did the email go out? They, I've, I've sent a couple out to different uh, different groups and kind of tailored it for different groups. Uh, the initial ones went out to, uh, last week and a couple after talking with some people, others went out today. So um, let's see what, the, what comes in then. I don't know if anyone saw the article. Um, there was an article I saw on Facebook. There's a town in New Jersey where a um, old Walmart or Kmart or whatever it was, was repurposed for uh, a cultivation warehouse and the residents are up in arms and wants the committee, the, the governing body to do something about the smell. It's apparently terrible. So yeah. those are things that, you know, need to be considered uh, by this subcommittee, um, you know, uh, unintended consequences that, that could pop up. So, um, that was one thing is for the, this committee, the subcommittee to look at, um, you know, what happened scenarios, what or what is happening scenarios in those towns, whether New Jersey or out of state that already have the different types of uses from cultivation, distribution, uh, you know, but apparently this one that's just a medical marijuana uh, for uh, cultivation, uh, the residents are up in arms because of the smell and they had no idea it was going to smell so bad. So those, you know, just, it'll be interesting to see, see how things go. So we'll work on a resolution for the next meeting and hopefully uh, we'll get enough response to, to be able to, to uh, designate uh, the membership. You want that for the 8, 816 meeting or the 913? Well, I'll, I'll draft something Janice and circulate it so people okay. can give any feedback. If you guys feel like it's ready for 816, then great. If not, you can hold off on it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank Doug. you. Hear me? All right. Next item status of building property. Can anybody hear me? Barely. You're really, really weak. Maybe put your know. volume up. Turn your volume up on your computer. I can hear everybody very loud. Hello, testing, testing. Yeah, did I see Did I see a marijuana facility in Edgewater Park on Route 130? Sure, Lee. Uh, the... Yes. So there's there's our neighboring community who has already established zoning for uh, some what is cure leaf medical marijuana? Yes, it's distribution, right, Doug? Yeah, it's med it's medical, but it will I think transition into general cure leaf is uh, sort of the main 
name down here. Um, I think they have a production facility in Hamilton. Um, and this site in, uh, in Edgewater Park is opening up and I believe they have a, an existing site. They're, they're one of the earlier established entities under this uh, medical marijuana program, but just, just, I just wanted to clarify that. I saw it the yeah. other day and oh boy, right? Okay, so we can look at them and see what happens there. Very true. All right, status of building and property, uh, 200 Ash uh, Canvas Shop. Uh, we're going to have at the um, let's see the September 13th meeting, uh, if I'm correct, a public discussion on the disposition of the uh, canvas factory, the brick building. Uh, at the June meeting, the, the uh, committee uh, uh, made the commitment to retain the, uh, the lot, the land as a, uh, a public park, but the uh, uh, status of the building, uh, uh, we'll have an open discussion and uh, uh, invite the public for their comments. Um, as to uh, use or uh, uh, future use of either that or another uh, facility that may or may not uh, replace it. So, uh, I think uh, that that what we we received the proposal from the engineer for professional services for demolition, and we'll put as a separate item, not in the consent agenda, early on. Uh, the vote on that resolution and you can open it up to the public. So when you've heard, you can either make a decision then or postpone it. But if a definitive decision is made to demolish, you can accept the engineer's proposal and authorize them to proceed. And, you know, they'll let you know that when we get the bids, uh, that's the action step that you're able to take at that point in time. You received uh, Harry's latest estimate, demolition costs between 110 and 130 depending on whether you have to bring in clean fill or whether you can uh, bury it in place, depending on the usage. So by doing that, it doesn't get postponed. You either vote to authorize. If you don't want to demolish the building, then don't vote on the resolution. Vote no on the resolution. If you want it demolished, vote yes on the resolution, and you'll go from there. Any committee comments on, uh, on that process? Uh, right now. I'm good with the process as we're moving forward. Uh, John, Chris. I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. Uh, Kate. Yeah, I'm good. All right. So mayor committee, do you want this like email blasted put on the website that there will be a special um, s session at the September 13th me meeting for public input on the uh, disposition of the building at 200 Ash Street? Um, or, or, or just as an item on the agenda? Or do you want us to actually, you know, blast, you know, email blast it, post it on the website? How would you like to do this? Because there was some talk at the previous meeting about I, I doing think some in special fairness, notification. I, I think it should get some wide, uh, wide publicity, so it's not considered uh, or taken as a surprise. Um, but uh, we should advertise it uh, a little more broadly than than the legal requirement. Which there is no legal requirement. I was going to send the same emails we did last time. Yeah. The Joint Land Use Board, the Environmental Board, those that group. But the question Janice asking is. Do you want to just put it on the website or we will put it on the website? What about the email blast? Email blast. We didn't do that last time. The police next soul, you know, we didn't there do right. How far you want to go with that? Well, I think uh, what we had before on, on the website, it, yes. Uh, I don't know about an email blast. Uh, <laughs> you, does anyone else? Uh, I think it's been a discussion item for several months on and off. And I think that um, we need to finalize something. Um, I thought we did have one meeting where public input was um, 
discussed at one point. So giving them an, a, an additional time to put forth their feelings is a good idea. Mm -hmm. But um, I thought we did part of that already. No, we did. And, and I think we had, uh, I know I'd, I had proposed something back in March and I think uh, March or April, and I think uh, budget some other things overran that and it kind of got, got muted when it finally came through. Uh, let's, uh, as an initial step, let's, let's repeat what, uh, what we had on the website uh, uh, and leave it at that. And if we have second thoughts uh, in the next couple of days, we'll amplify that. How's that? Yeah, I mean, you've got the meeting on the 16th to make the final decision. Yeah. You're not going to do this till the 23rd of September, but we'll start getting the word out so people who actually have an interest. There were very few people who actually read all the stuff. And as I pointed out in my email, if any of you want copy hard copies, because they're fairly voluminous to send emails yeah. of any of those five reports uh, that are out there about the property, mm -hmm. let us know and we'll put hard copies in your box or we'll, we'll email it to you, obviously. And that'd so be let us know. So you guys have, you're up to date. At least of you have to make sure you've read everything. Yeah, they'd be the uh, preliminary study and the environmental uh, uh, right. ERI uh, reports on the findings and so forth. So, all right, any other comments on that? On 200 Ash Campus Shop? All right, status of sidewalk installation plan. Uh, yeah, I just put that on there just to verify at the last meeting you approved the engineering uh, uh, work to be done on it. And I just want to make sure everybody knows we're going to get started on it. Uh, Harry's indicated they're starting the survey work so that the next time you'll see anything is when we're out to bids. So the goal is to get out to bids for in front of the municipal building and the uh, municipal garage. As a separate thing, we did the chapter 159 for the funding. So that has been set up. So we're just on here as a, to let you know that uh, we'll be moving forward on it. Good. Anyone's got any questions? No okay. questions. Good. Just going to move forward. That's important. Thank you. Go ahead, Harry. Move forward. Mm -hmm. All right. Regulations for short term residential rentals. Uh, I think this is a carryover. I don't know if we. Mayor, I think from the last meeting, we discussed uh, uh, the need whether to have for the inspections for the high turnover, high frequency Airbnb types and uh, how to handle that as far as our existing code requires an inspection on every turnover and whether we wanted to add something that uh, either for some intermediate time period for high frequency turnovers or turnovers of a certain duration, that type of thing. Uh, Mrs. Laura, you were, you were the chief explainer in, in, in charge there, so. Mayor, if I could just interject real quick, I, I, yeah, my, nice. notes re my notes reflect that um, we had decided we were going to remove the inspection on turnover because we don't think that people are generally complying with that anyway on the regular rentals. We're getting annual inspections and that would obviate the need of sort of trying to figure out how to apply this to the, to the one Airbnb that has popped up in Delanco. And, and I think also not sort of, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend putting anything special in relative to that type of use at this point, because I think it's such a formative area of the law that I, I feel like we need to um, see how things shake out a little bit and maybe what the best opportunities are long-term to, to, to deal with any issues that may arrive from those specialized uses. Uh, so I, I had a note just to remove that annual or that that inspection that was on turnover. Uh, and I thought that's where we fell at the last meeting. So I don't know if that helps in trying to get us from point A to point B or if there's more to more to talk about. That was my understanding as well, but that we were definitely going to add that to our rental ordinance that they at least have a yearly inspection. I thought that's what we decided. So they would be covered under the yearly inspection. The, the, the issue would be we'd just be removing the interim, any interim inspections because yearly is enough. And 
probably most people who should be contacting the town to say I had a change in tenant and I need another inspection are not doing it. Some, exactly. Uh, yes, some do. So what's in the ordinance currently is that uh, not only are you required to have the annual, but you're also required to have one upon change of occupants. Um, and that would trigger a, a high frequency. Uh, so it was talked about just since we have an annual program, just removing for all rentals, the change of occupancy. We do, however, um, at the office, when there is a tenant complaint um, during the year, uh, we do send the rental inspector back out on many occasions based on a complaint coming into the office. Um, and that could be, you know, when we've had them where they've had their inspection, everything passed, but several months later or a few months later, something comes up and um, it's egregious enough to say, let's send the rental inspector out again um, based on a complaint that we, we received. So, um, but what, what this would do would uh, remove inspection on every change of occupancy. And like Doug is saying, some of the people do comply with that, probably 90% do not anyway. Are we all in agreement that's uh, the language we want? Uh, yeah, just um, for, for my clarification. So even if, like, like if I wanted to rent out my house under this, but I don't get any tenants this year, this would still cover me that I would still need the, the annual inspection, even though there was no tenant, there was no changeover, correct? Yeah, if you hold yourself out as a rental, then you have to get inspected. And you're automatically covered regardless. And you get you would get a one year ins sorry, annual inspection. Any other comments, questions? It seems to uh, be a uh, practical and I guess common sense approach to uh, dealing with the AV, uh, the uh, Airbnbs and uh, also helps with the uh, inspection process uh, time-wise on the having an annual inspection of the apartments or the rentals that we have in town. Uh, I feel uh, encouraged by what Mrs. Lore said that, you know, a complaint comes in and then the inspector uh, goes out to follow up on it. So if we have a change in tenants uh, in a property, uh, the new tenant can make a phone call to the, uh, the township and say, you know, uh, we've just moved in, we want to have an inspection and uh, still be covered, I guess, uh, from the, the new renter. Uh, requesting a, an inspection. All right. Well, Mrs. Lori, get with Mr. Heinhold and, and cut and paste. All right. Did, did that go out? We're good. All right. I think we're set. Thanks, Mike. All right. Your notes are better than mine, Doug. Thank you. Uh, number six, uh, Township Property, West Avenue Woods Area Issues uh, Update. This is the strip of land uh, from Perkins through West and beyond. Uh, any news? And Mr. Fenimore, if you're still on there. You did get uh, Kevin's report, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah, um, Mr. Mayor, I did meet with um, Kevin and we walked the property and uh, he took notes and then uh, went to the shade tree me uh, meeting last week and they're discussing it. And um, I guess that's about as far as it's going. Well, John, did you read uh, Kevin's report? Yes, I yes. did. And do you Brown? agree with him, John? Brown Which, do you agree with Maybe, what Kevin what Kevin recommended? Me, Rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John. Fenwell. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, there was a 
I mean, there was a lot of iffy trees, uh, but the trees that he uh, focused on were the ones that he thought could be uh, damaging. So he kind of marked them. But I mean, uh, I, I think uh, talking to him, I mean, he said, you know, people got to understand that this is a woods. Yeah. And generally when something falls down in the woods, it stays there. So, I mean, it would be uh, quite uh, expensive to try to go in there and, and to, you know, work on all these trees. I mean, it, it would be quite a bit of money. So uh, he, he had it in his report, and I think that's as, you know, as far as it going. John, is this something that the things he's recommending are things that you can do? Or is this something that would need a contractor? No, you, you'd have to have a contractor do it, okay. go in there. I um, mean, there's so much uh, trees in the way, you won't be able to get a bucket truck in. So you're going to have to um, have somebody with knowledge of climbing and whatnot. And my climbing days are over. <laughs> yeah. Folks, uh, this is Carl Taroski. I do serve on the uh, Bay Tree Commission. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can they hear me? Yes, Mr. Trashi. Uh, you have yes. some comments regarding this, uh, uh, Mr. Sebelia's report and that uh, strip of land? Yes, it's an extremely detailed report, so much so that uh, at our last uh, meeting, we decided to uh, basically table the uh, report for our next meeting when we will have much more time, hopefully, to concentrate just on his report. And basically, it is a number of trees that he says should be taken down, but he does say, as uh, John Fenimore mentioned, that they should fall into the forested area and just be left there to rot as is normal in a forest. But that uh, there are many, many limbs along that whole stretch that uh, are um, threatening property owners. So we, we have that for our next meeting, uh, which is the uh, fourth Wednesday of each month. Um, so I just thought it was appropriate for me to jump in and mention that. Thank you. Thanks for the, uh, the fill in, the elaboration on that. Any comments from the committee on this before we uh, conclude the discussions? I think John Brown was going to, he was at the meeting, so he could fill us in. Yeah, John, do you have anything, John, uh, John Brown, do you have anything to add on that? Can you hear me? Because nobody's responding to anything I say tonight. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. All right, so I read the report and, uh, you know, I was at the shade tree meeting and, uh, you know, the way that I heard it was this issue was reverted to the township committee for us to, of course, review the report and, and discuss it because ultimately it will fall upon our shoulders. Uh, with the proper budget money. And uh, I, I, I think this, this opens up a can of worms on all the forested areas within the town that abut, you know, private residential properties. Uh, you know, I have dealt with trees from my neighbors. And the rule is if it hangs over my fence line, I can cut it. Okay. And if it's a, a hazardous condition to where something's going to fall, I'm going to cut it once it reaches my property value, my property. So, you know, every time we talk about this wooded area up there, West Avenue and along the, the dead end streets, it's, it's a very costly discussion, whether it be put a road up there, now it's to clear it out. Uh, I, I would just be careful. You know, we, we had those residents on West Avenue did not come to us and say they were having a problem. Uh, it was the one resident on Perkins Lane. So I, I, I don't want to jump into spending a lot of money to appease uh, one resident when the house is against a wooded area 
and winter will be coming and everything will die back. And, uh, you know, one of the first comments that Mr. Sebelius stated was if it falls in the forest, the forest owns it. So I don't want to beat it. I don't want to beat this up too bad. No, I, com I, I completely agree. I mean, that's, that's, that's the logic of nature. Uh, but, uh, and as you say, if it, if it creates, uh, if, a, if a tree in, in, the, in that strip uh, becomes a hazard extending over onto private property, then it, that should be addressed. But uh, otherwise, you know, if a tree, it's a woods, you know, nature take, takes care of it. There's no re reason to try to blaze a trail in there. And uh, that's, we would blow our, our shade tree budget in the first 10 feet. So. Well, there there was more than one resident that's complained, and Glenn Latchall has complained. I know he hasn't complained recently, but he's complained a number of years, and John Fenimore is aware of that. So he's one one area. He's on West Avenue. Um, so I think those complaints should be addressed. Um, yeah. The new one on Perkins and West Avenue where Glenn Latchall is. I think they both should be addressed. Yeah. Because you come back to the committee on more than one occasion, nothing's ever been done. And I think those properties should be addressed. Well, I think I think Mr. Fenimore is taking care of the one or, or is has talked to the, the resident up on the on West there. And it's 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 it and it becomes a, an issue of access too. I mean it's uh but uh it's 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 a case by case uh, basis, but uh, as far as like what Mr. Brown was saying, there's no need to uh, go in there and blaze a trail uh, and and try to get to it from the inside. Uh, so I think it's being handled uh, uh, as best as uh, and economically as we can right now. So any other comments on that? Uh, any other discussion items? Uh, anything in addition to what was published? And we have an executive session, uh, some items to cover in there. And uh, if there's no other comments at this time. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, there were a couple of things that uh, Mr. Fritz had put out there. Uh, one had to do with the history board uh, not being advised about the, um, the canvas factory. Um, and I'll ask Mr. Fritz to, I guess, just chime in real quick here, uh, not to extend the meeting too long, but to uh, give his uh, opinion or whatever he's inquiring about. Uh, Mr. Thanks, Fritz? Uh, yes, uh, for, thanks for the invitation. Uh, Peter Fritz, uh, 303 Union Avenue in Delanco, uh, the Secretary of the uh, uh, History Board. And I don't really think that I'm speaking for the whole history board, but I am speaking for myself who's on the history board, that uh, I think it was 14 years ago, 13 years ago that we formed the, um, uh, the Delanco uh, Advisory History, uh, you know, History Advisory Board for the purpose of providing right. some advice to the Township Committee about historic properties and, uh, you know, what shape they were in. And if there was a question about, um, uh, preserving uh, uh, or even acquiring uh, our um, resolution that formed the, the organization even talked about acquiring property under certain circumstances. But it never seems that that we're really in an official capacity asked to um, come together and provide any input when these historic buildings are, are um, endangered. Now we just lost uh, 507 um, Burlington Avenue, which was a 150 year old building. We know, we, and, we know about, Peter, we- Well, we I knew, yes. We yeah. know about it six years ago. And for six years, when people ask me, I've been defending the, uh, t the township committee and defending the bridge commission, saying that it, this was necessary because it was a, a traffic situation and the, and the, uh, the roadway was going to be uh, changed and the, uh, the elbow is going to be softened in the, in the whole thing. And I was saying, you know, it's a shame, but this is something that has to be done because of the traffic. 
Right. And now I'm learning that they were not even going to change the roadway. It, it was, came it, down because you didn't like the way it looked, Peter. I mean, that's it was of, a safety issue, Peter. This was a yeah. safety issue. The, the county originally purchased that property because if they had to make a traffic change, they're still going to keep an easement on that property. But that building was also a safety issue. And uh, it was owned by a landlord who has other places in town who wasn't taking care of the property. So it was an opportunity for the county to purchase it in the event that they needed to change the, the roadway. They have no desire to change the roadway right now. They feel that the vision itself will help us and not have to put another crosswalk where the ice cream bar is. But uh, this is, the county's owned it for probably seven years, I think, six or seven yeah, years. Yeah, six or seven years. And, uh, but, you know, six or seven years preserve. ago, it wasn't in as bad condition as it is, as it was a week ago. Okay. Um, right. and, so, Peter, uh, what's the argument? I mean, you knew about yeah. that. The town knew, knew about that for yeah. years. The camera well, shop is, is, you know, we've advertised it. We've talked about it for months on end. It's not a surprise. And as I said, we're, we're, we're gonna have a public forum at the September meeting. And this is- Okay, new so it's, just, it's a public forum, but we're not being asked as a group that was formed to provide advice to the Township Committee. We have not been asked to provide a, you know, formal input to this stuff. Uh, if, we, if we happen to hear about it and then we you know, respond, but I'm not sure what the procedure is when something comes up. And we've had discussions before about uh, demolition uh, permits. And when a demolition permit is issued that the, the uh, history board is supposed to get several weeks notice. So we have an opportunity with, to at least you know, preserve on film um, you know, a, a historic building before we lose it. But um, it doesn't seem to be a really good inter interface between the uh, the Delanco History Board and the Township Committee. Uh, and I, I just wanted to point this out that we, we've lost a number of buildings now, including the commercial building right next door to 507 that we lost a couple of years ago. Right. So it's um, just, <laughs> we can talk about the procedure of you know, how yeah. we interact. Okay. As your liaison to the History Board, Peter, I have kept the History Board for the number of years that I've been the liaison up to date on everything that happening in this township. At any time, any member of the history board is certainly welcome to suggest to the township committee, to recommend to the township committee at any time. And I have, and I attend, if I don't attend the meetings, I send a report. I mean, <laughs> I'm there, you know yeah. it. And you yeah. have the option as a board or as an individual to write something to the township committee. And I believe some members of the history board did make some comments um, regarding the building 507 and also regarding um, 200 ash. So um, I would put your efforts into writing something that can be documented if that's what you want. But in any case, these old buildings become a safety issue and the township doesn't have the funds to secure them and to reopen them. It's not something that a small town like Delanco can do. And I think our history board should be aware of that. I mean, I don't think that's something that we would have to continue to tell you. Um, but Do you recall a, a, a conversation that we had about six years ago about trying to secure that building uh, uh, for use by the history board because we have no location in town that, that, that we have control over where we could you know, store things or, or be open to the public or have a small museum or something? Do you remember that conversation? I, I remember- For 507? Yes, yes, for 507. We, we didn't even own the building. We didn't own the building. And we had no access to that building. We, so I don't- I believe I don't, it was after the, the, the uh, bridge commission had acquired the building. And then the question was, 
was it possible to get it from the, the uh, Bridge Commission and, uh, and use it, even if we were only going to be able to use it for five or six years, it would have been a, um, you know, better than the situation that it is now. So it's not that we haven't you know, made an attempt at some time, but it's just... I don't, I don't recall that conversation. Like we together yet. I don't recall that conversation coming to the Township Committee. And if it did, I apologize because I don't recall it at all. Um, okay. But I would suggest if you have something to add or to put information on any property that it be put in writing from the board. If the board wants to do so, you certainly have that right. Any member of the township, any resident has the right to send us information regarding whatever we're doing. So okay. no one's saying you can't do it. No one's saying that we're not listening but I would put it in writing so that it can be brought up and discussed. Okay, and, well, yeah. thank you for the opportunity to give you some input. Yeah. All right, uh, at this time, uh, a resolution for executive session, uh, Mrs. Lord. One, resolution 103 uh, to go into executive session. I have personnel, attorney clients. Uh, Doug or Richard, if you have any other executive. Yeah. Do I think personnel and turning a client covers it. Is there a motion to go into executive session under resolution 103? No moved. Second. Second. Um, motion by Mr. Brown. Second, I think it was Ms. Holland. And resolution 103 to go into executive session, uh, probably on the order of about. All in favor. Aye. Oh, aye. We only order about 45 or 50 minutes, hopefully. The recording has stopped. Hey, everybody, hang on just a second. Hang on. We need to have, uh, let's see, does Harry need to go with us for anything? I think so. I don't think at this point for Dolan, we'll do that separately, perhaps. Yeah, uh, I agree. We'll just give a quick, I'll just give a quick update on Dolan, and then we'll have a more substantive discussion later. So is yeah. We'll get him later. We'll get Harry later on the door. No, remember, you don't, are you there? You do not meet again. Oh, well, Harry, for Harry, he's not back at a meeting until September 13th. Yeah, I think we're going to talk, we were talking about having just a staff meeting on that and okay. a report back, not okay. a full committee until we okay. sit down with that. Right, digest what came out today. Yeah, yes. to last minute for that. All right. All right, so Harry, I guess you're, you're set free. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night, Harry. Chief, you're right. done. Good night, Chief. Good night. Good night, Chief. And uh, we go in a breakout room, or is this? Uh, no, or just is this hang on a second. Here? I'm waiting to. Uh, yeah. For everybody to. Calm down. You're going, in, you're going into a breakout room. And right. along with Mr. Okay. Uh, Good Mr. night, Holzer. everyone. Good night, Kitty. Good night, Kitty. I think everybody's out of executive. Back into public session. All right. If there's we're all back, correct? Mm -hmm. Everyone's back, yes. And um, recording has resumed. All right, very good. If there's no further business, a motion to adjourn, please. So, so second. second. Good. Aye. 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 Favor? Aye, got it. Thank you. Okay. All in right. favor. Aye. 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 Have a good night, Aye. everybody. Aye. Be well, everyone. Good night, everybody. Aye. Have a good night, everybody. Night, Aaron. Thank, Aaron. Thank, Thank you so much.